Hi everyone, my name is Nuno and welcome once again to this series of videos regarding all you need to know about 3D audio. In this video we're going to talk about object-based audio. Most of you already have heard of things like Dolby Atmos, so let's try to understand a little more what is object-based audio. But before that, let's go back to channel-based audio. So the concept of channel-based audio is that you have all of these channels that you uh, already know where each one of those channels should be reproduced. You say, okay, I have a left channel, channel, I have a center, I have a right, a left surround. And by adding all of these channels, you already know, no, no, I'm mixing this for this layout where this channel should be reproduced in this position. So pretty much what happens is what you see on the image. So you have several sounds in your, uh, on your mixing desk on your digital audio extension, then, then each sound you're going to pass through a panel where essentially you say, okay, where do I want the sound to be positioned? Do I want this on the front, slightly to the left side, on the sides, whatever you want? So, and then the panel, depending where you want the sound to be positioned, essentially the panel will, will uh, create the right amount of the signal that will send to each one of those channels. So if you have a sound and you want the sound to be on the center but slightly to the left side, what it's going to do is, okay, let's send, for instance, 90% of the signal to the center, let's send 15% of the signal to the left, and now zero to all the other channels. So then what you're going to do is you're going to mix all of those sounds together. The, the first sound, the second sound, the sound, pretty much everything that comes out of those panels, you mix them together and then you get this global left signal, the center, the right. You distribute these channels completely independent now because you have now the, the, the final left, the final center, the final right and so on. And then during the reproduction, pretty much what you do is take each one of those signals and have a loudspeaker reproducing them. And that's it. With object-based audio, what we do is completely different. What you're going to do is you're going to have all of these original audio material, all of these sounds, but we are not going to mix them. You're going to continue having them completely independent without mixing any of those. We're going to distribute, distribute each one of those sounds completely independent from each others without mixing them. Now the panner, pretty much when you use the panner and you say, okay, I want this sound to be in this direction or that or whatever you want, actually the panner will not change the sound or distribute the, the sound over the channels. No, pretty much it's going to take note of your intention, say, okay, the user wants the sound coming in this direction or that direction. And it's going to also distribute that information regarding the panner without doing nothing to the sound. Then during reproduction, and based on the layout of the room, okay, it's when actually the sounds are mixed. So pretty much when someone do a playback of object-based audio, what he's going to do is, okay, I have this sound, this sound should be coming from this direction, so let's look at my layout and say which speakers should I actually use to reproduce the sound on that direction. Which means that if I have 20 speakers, I'm taking advantage of those 20 speakers, but now if I'm doing playback on a room with 60 speakers, actually I'm taking, I'm using these 60 speakers and making sure that I'm sending that information to the right uh, speakers to get what I want. So pretty much with object-based audio, once again, Instead of mixing sounds to the output channels, like we're doing channel-based audio, like we do in, in stereo, in 5.1, in 7.1, where actually you are mixing your final audio, your final 5.1, 7.1, or stereo, okay, what you're going to do is, okay, let's keep all the channels completely independent, not mixed. Let's add some additional information regarding the, the positions, okay, and we call this metadata, which means data about the data. So. In this case, sound is the data and the position is the data about the data. And it's where do I want the sound? Do I want the sound to be almost like a, a very uh, precise direction of? I want the sound to have some kind of apparent size. I want a large sound or if I want a very almost uh, spot kind of sound. And then eventually the movement, if I want the sound to start here, but go there and do some crazy movement. So all of that information is sent separately from all the rest, okay? And then we're going to distribute all of these objects, the audio, independent audio of each 
sound and the information, the metadata regarding that sound. Then, during reproduction, what you do is, based on the layout that I have there on that actually venue, considering the metadata that I'm receiving, saying, OK, this sound should be placed there, this sound over there, and so on, that's where the engine will actually do the final mix of everything in real time and take advantage of the layout, which means that if I have more speakers, I will going to have much more space definition. If I have less speakers, great, I'm still taking advantage of that particular uh, scenario uh, that I have. So this pretty much is what we have. Sounds independent, not mixed. We're going to distribute them completely independent from each other without mixing anything. And then the actual mix of the several sounds happening only during uh, reproduction. Of course, if you are on the studio, you still need to listen to what are you doing. So pretty much what you in the studio, you have this reproduction uh, model also render using there and working at the studio for you to be able to listening. But what is distributed when you generate a master file, all the sounds are completely independent if they are using object-based audio. In terms of object-based audio, of course, the the, the famous format that everyone knows is Dolby Atmos. Uh, from all the formats that use object-based audio, Dolby Atmos is the most well-known. Dolby Atmos supports up to 118 objects, which means that you are able to get 118 uh, sounds completely independent from each other that is then sent, for instance, to the movie theater. And on top of that, you also have a 7.1.2 bed that you're going to talk in a few minutes uh, that essentially allows to also have objects, but also channel-based audio if you want. So if you have something pre-mixed already in 7.1, you can use that directly without using object. So pretty much 118, if you add these 10 channels that you need for the 7.1.2, pretty much Dolby Atmos is able to send 128 mono streams of audio to the final theater or whatever a reproduction system is using. And then on the theater, when it's being reproduced, it allows the system to have up to 64 independent channels, which means that you can have 64, up to 64 speakers, each one playing completely different things from all the other. It's not like 5.1, where you have these arrays that we mentioned on the previous video that you have a lot of speakers, but all of them playing the exact same thing. Now, with Dolby Atmos, you are able to get now each speaker acting completely independent and, of course, with a much better space resolution. So let's see what are the changes when you go to Dolby Atmos Theater. So in blue, this pretty much it's the traditional 5.1 or 7.1 uh, theater. You have these three speakers in the front, left, center, right. You have this array of speakers that, depending if it is 5.1 or 7.1, pretty much uh, are reproducing two surround speakers, two surround channels, or four surround channels, OK? So when you go to Adobe Atmos, of course, the most obvious difference is that now you're going to have two rows of speakers in the ceiling, one on the left side, another on the right south side. And these uh, speakers are there to give you this sense of sound coming from above you, exploring the height component uh, of sound. The second thing that you may notice is that on a typical 5.1 and 7.1, actually the the speakers start around one third of the room so you are in the room probably one third doesn't have of the the side walls don't have speakers and then the other two thirds start having several speakers with Dolby Atmos now you have speakers completely until reaching to the screen which means that it is to have completely coverage around you without any kind of gaps so you have these additional speakers between the screen and between the, the the side speakers. Also, if you have a very large large screen, you may have two additional speakers there, a center left and a center right, which means that you're going to have now five instead of three. Okay, so these are the main difference in terms of Dolby Atmos. So when th people think about Dolby Atmos, they automatically think about sound coming from above, and that is of course it's great. But one of the important characteristics of Dolby Atmos, it's the ability to have a lot of space resolution and this independent sound. So imagine the following. Imagine that you have a sound, 
a car passing by, you want to start in the left side, in the back, and then move forward to the front. If you try to do this with 5.1, actually what you're going to do is you start with the sound on the left surround, okay, so pretty much all of those arrays of speakers are playing the exact same thing, and then you start to change the panner, going, moving forward, and pretty much what you do is decrease the amount that is sent to the left surround and increase the left channel. So essentially, start like this and then you increase the other and you get the sense of car passing by. If you are using Dolby Atmos, what absolutely actually is different. So you say, okay, the car is over there, which means that now it's one speaker playing and then as the car moves forward, it's going to pass through all the speakers one by one. So which means you get a much more detail instead of having simply two channels, one going down and another going up. Now you get much more precise uh, uh, information in terms of space and sound image. So like I mentioned, Dolby Atmos also support channel-based audio and you call that BEDS. So BEDS, it's a, a way of using channel-based audio, pretty much in Dolby Atmos is a 7.1.2 bed, and you can do that whatever you want. For instance, imagine that someone sends you uh, the mix, the soundtrack that, was, that is already mixed in 7.1. Okay, you can drop that on this bed directly, you don't need to use objects unless you want to do some crazy things with it. Or imagine someone, a sound designer, created uh, a soundscape in Times Square that was already created considering 5.1, you can also drop into that bed. And the advantage of beds and channel-based audio is that you can place as many sounds as you want on top of each other, as long as you don't get clipping, it's not an issue, okay? So you can continue having several sounds over there, They are if they are already mixed in stereo in 5.1, and 7.1, and 7.1.2, you can use that and drop everything on beds, and then you can use objects for this detail movement. So once again, if you want the maximum detail in terms of movement and position, objects are the way to do it because you get this extra precision and you get the exact speakers or the exact sound coming from that particular direction. If you already have materials that were pre-mixed in 5.1, 7.1 or 7.1.2, you can use the beds directly and use that. Object-based audio, you talk about Dolby Atmos, but there are other formats out there. There is Auro, Auro Max, you have DTX-X and many other formats. So object-based audio, what are the pros? Well, it works for any layout. The idea of object-based audio is that you do a mix once and then you can reproduce them on every single layout, okay? Also gives you the best space resolution available. So if you add more speakers into the layout, you will get even more detail in terms of sound, and that is great. In terms of cons, what are the problems? Well, you need to distribute a lot of channels. Of course, if you are sending a, a, a movie to a, a movie theater, you have 128 channels for you to, to use, and it's not an issue. But for instance, if you are trying to do streaming or placing a movie uh, and distributing on a Blu-ray, you will not uh, have the 128 uh, channels available, which means that you need to take some objects and render that as bad also to be able to get some objects and a more concise, compressed number of channels over there. So this distribution of a lot of channels could be an issue, especially in some application. The other thing is that since you need to keep each sound completely separated, of course, you have more than 100 channels for you to use, but if some mixes 100 channels may not be enough. For instance, with some particles, we have renders with tens and tens of thousands of sounds. Imagine 20,000 sounds playing at the same time. So as you can imagine, we cannot render that as objects. We would need to have beds because Dolby Atmos will not be able to support that. But once again, as long if you are doing something for triatrical and the number of channels is not an issue and if you are having sounds and you're pretty much using 100 sounds playing at the same time, okay, it's no on whatsoever, and pretty much you get the, the advantage of uh, object-based audio. Before we end, just a, an interesting curiosity. There was this movie from Walt Disney called Fantasia. It was released in 1940. Um, 
everyone know it's uh, the one with Mickey Mouse with the wizard's hat um, and pretty much Fantasia it's a movie that is a series of movie clips that are animated and of course at that time Disney thought that uh, since the, mu the movie is mainly music driven it, you would need to have a special sound system to take advantage for people to experience the movie as it should. So Disney had created this Fanta sound, sound system that was a proprietary sound system that actually it was implemented in some movie theaters in the United States. There was also some models of the system traveling, doing a tour between some cities to allow people from different cities to experience Fantasia with the best sound experience. And the, this system, Fanta Sound, actually add speakers around, which means that Fantasia is considered the first movie to use surround sound. Also, there were several models of this Fanta sound um, system, and some of them have speakers on the ceiling, which means that this was also the first movie to use immersive audio, because some people were able to uh, enjoy the movie with scum sounds coming from above. If you're actually going to see behind how was, this was implemented, well, they used a four-track recorder, okay? Pretty much what they did was they used the first three tracks to have three tracks of audio, and then the fourth track have a control system that allow the system to matrix and routing the, the sound to the speakers. For, for instance, imagine that at some point the first track is going to the left, the second track to the right, but then later on the first track is sent to the front, the second is sent to the back. Depending on the point of view, but from my point of view, is that this was also the first movie to use object-based audio, because the concepts of object-based audio are over there, okay? Yes, it was not digital, like, like, like Dolby Atmos, it was analog, yes, it didn't have the space resolution of Dolby Atmos, but the concepts of object-based audio were there. You get independent channels that are distributed completely independent, and then you get this metadata that will control where the sound should be positioned. So, uh, my uh, congratulations to Disney, because once again, 80 years ago, they were very far ahead uh, uh, of everything else. I hope you have enjoyed it. Uh, don't miss the next video, which we are going to talk about Ambisonics. And of course, we have the free book, all you need to know about 3D audio that you can get from our site. And see you in the next video.